be back in Lima. It was a little colder the last time I was here, but it's working. That's all I can tell you. Uh, it's uh, great to be back with you today. This is, uh, I don't, we don't have a lot of young people in here today. They're the ones who are going to pay the piper if we uh, don't get this under control. And frankly, uh, they're going to pay part of the piper for what's been happening. This isn't going to be wiped out in a day. Uh, I went to Congress uh, many years ago. I started in 1983. Uh, and I began to realize the seriousness of the problem the day I got to Washington. But my understanding of this issue really uh, just didn't occur the day I walked into Washington. I think it was 1979 when I offered my first uh, effort to provide for uh, a constitutional convention for a federally balanced budget. And uh, that was 79. I hate to think how many years ago that, that was. And uh, yeah, it was kind of shoved to the back. And I think it passed the Senate. It got to the House and just never went anywhere. And then there were, as Steve mentioned, a bunch of states around the country started passing things, but no one really took it very seriously, to tell you the truth. Um, I have a number of observations. Back in Congress, I started in 1989 to offer a program that got us started on the road to a balanced budget. Uh, the vote that day was, uh, I think it was 305 to 30. I had the 30. Now, Steve will tell you, when you offer an amendment and you get 30 votes, uh, you have all these red marks up on the board and with only 30 green. Some people would be embarrassed, but I thought it was actually pretty good that there were 29 other people who were as concerned as I was about the direction of the country. Uh, I became the senior Republican on the Budget Committee, and I had been introducing budgets year after year after year. And um, in 1993, I became the senior Republican. And working with Republicans and conservatives, uh, we offered uh, a significant proposal to make big and dramatic savings in the federal budget without a tax increase. The year before that, Tim Penny, who was a Democrat from Minnesota at the time, he's now an independent and I, tried to cut one penny out of every dollar in the federal budget. One penny. And uh, it was called the Penny Kasich Bill. And it was very interesting because this bill had a real chance of passing. I think it was really, you could argue, the first shot heard in the war, the, in the war to really try to balance the budget. And it was really interesting because it was not only Democrats that opposed it, but there were a number of Republicans fought aggressively against cutting one penny out of every dollar. Um, well, things kind of accelerated, and we got into 1995. Republicans won the majority. Bill Clinton was president. He had people inside of his administration who was concerned about this issue. The public seemed to be a little bit more interested in this, uh, and we started working aggressively to, uh, to get to a balanced budget. We made a deal in 1997, which produced the first balanced budget since man had walked on the moon. And we paid down the largest amount of the public debt in modern history. And we were running surpluses. And um, here's the most important thing. Think about those years. The economy was really hitting on all cylinders. Isn't that what it's really all about? It's not about numbers. It's about the strength and the health of the American economy and whether people can have work. <clears throat> and so back in those years of 98 and 99 and 2000, Things were, were moving along pretty darn well because we had controlled the spending. Now, 